Hello, this is Chris Hammond with ChrisDoc.com. Welcome back to our DNN 9 video series. In this video, we're going to get into the nitty gritty details of the site settings within our DNN 9 installation. First thing we'll do is we'll just go quickly and show you how you can access the site settings. Then we're going to go through the various settings, starting with the site info tab, at which point we'll update the logo and the fave icon for our site. We'll get into the site behavior tab, talk about the options there, the languages tab, and then finally we'll get into the search tab and go through some of the settings there within the search configuration for DNN. Now be sure to check out our next video in which we're going to show you how to upgrade DNN 9, but let's go ahead and switch over into our site settings now. So here I have my DNN 9 installation. On a previous video, we cleaned off the content on the homepage. So it looks like it's actually empty. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and log into our site. Now I'm logging in as the host or the super user account, which has access to all things within our DNN installation. Now you typically would also be able to access the site settings if you have an administrator account. We'll talk about the admin account and the configuration of those in future videos. So to access the site settings, we're going to go into the persona bar here on the left side of the page, mouse over the gear icon, and click on the site settings option. Now the site settings allow us to come in and configure a number of aspects around our DNN site. Now in the last video in the series, we actually configured our site title, our description, and our keywords. And one thing I didn't mention in the last video is that the site title can actually be used within the page title on every page within our DNN site. We'll talk about that when we get into the page settings specifically, but it is important from a search engine optimization perspective that you provide useful information in that site title. Also from an SEO perspective, we have the description and the keywords options as we discussed in that last video. These are the options that get utilized if you create a page in DNN that doesn't have its own description and its own keywords defined. Now after that, we get into our site time zone option. Time zone should be configured for the website or the portal based on where the server is. So the server time for this particular machine is in the central time, so I wanna make sure that the time zone in DNN is configured at that same time zone. And we also have our copyright setting there, which we can go in and we can change the value of the copyright statement that gets displayed at the bottom of the page in the default theme or skin in DNN, but can be displayed ultimately anywhere depending on how you configure your custom theme or your custom skin. Now, the first thing we're actually going to change here on the site settings is our site logo. Now, our site logo allows us to upload a new file, which is the middle icon here. We can enter a URL or a link to an existing image somewhere, or we can browse the file system, which will allow us to look for a file within our DNN installation. Now, I'm going to go ahead and upload a new file here for our logo. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate to the location where I have that particular file. And I'm going to upload this old school version of the .NET Nuke logo. So if I were to go ahead and hit save, which I'm not going to do just yet, that would save that logo. And then if I were to refresh the page, I would see that logo being displayed at the top of the page. Now on the right side, we have our fave icon option. The fave icon is a, an image or a logo that can be displayed within the browser. Again, that's another file that we can go ahead and upload. Now a fave icon is a very specific file type. It's a .ico file. So you have to have that created by a, a plugin or a special tool within Photoshop if you wanna create the image with a, a tool like Photoshop. From there, if we go ahead and click on save, that will update the first page here on our site settings. And let's just go ahead and close that window and refresh the page. We can now see that we have that old school DNN logo displayed up here where the original DNN logo is being displayed. Now the fave icon may or may not show up immediately. Uh, depending on your browser in Google Chrome, it tends to show up next to the URL or the domain name. It can also show up in the tabs within Chrome. I'm in Edge, so we'll see if it shows up for us at any point throughout this video. 
Let's go ahead and navigate back into the site settings. We'll start talking about some of the other configuration options in the site settings. The site behavior tab has four or five available tabs underneath of that. First one here is the default pages option. The default pages option provides us a configuration within our DNN site, which allows us to configure things like a splash page or a home page. Now specifically, a splash page is a page within your site that can be loaded for the first or when someone visits the site for the first time. The home page is oftentimes the page that you want people to visit when they visit for the first time. But many years ago, it was very common on a, on a website to have a splash page, some sort of an animation or a video that you wanted to present to a visitor for the first visit. You can create a page, put your content on that page, and then make that your splash page. The home page option, which is the drop down list underneath of the splash page option, allows us to configure kind of the root of our website. If I click on the logo within our skin or our theme, where is that going to take me? It's going to take you to the page that you have selected as the home page. Now we can also configure a login page and a registration page. And we'll talk about those in future videos as we go to start to utilize some of those modules in DNN. Over on the right column here, we've got user profile page, search results, a 404 page, and a 500 error page. Here you can configure very specific pages for these options. A user profile page is typically where you want to send a user if they click on their profile or if they want to view someone else's profile. In this case, DNN Out of the Box has a page called the Activity Feed, which has the user profile module on it. It also has a couple of other modules on it as well. Search results page would typically be a page that has the search results module on it. Out of the box in DNN, it creates a page for you with that name, with that module on it, and defines that as the search results page. Now, if you want to customize your 404 page, if someone tries to visit a page that no longer exists on your site, you can configure a 404 page with some specific content and then choose that page here in the settings. And then finally, the 500 error page. If there's an error on the site, what do you want to render to the visitor? Now, from there, there's also an option at the bottom called HTML page header tags. If you need to put an HTML tag inside of the page header in the head tag, you can place that information here in the site settings. DNN will embed that tag in all of the pages on your DNN site. From there, we can go into the messaging option here under site behavior. Within the messaging option, you can enable or disable private messaging. If you have a site that you are not allowing people to register and log in on other than your content managers, you might want to actually just disable the private messaging by selecting that option here. By default, private messaging is enabled. Within that, you can start to throttle messages so that Users can only send messages every X number of minutes. By default, it's set at zero. If you run across folks abusing the system, you might want to change that value. You can also limit how many people that a user can send a message to. We can enable profanity filters. We can allow them to include attachments. If you want to include the attachment in the message, we can also send an email to the member to let them know that they've received a private message on the site. After that, we have a user profiles tab. The user profiles tab allows you to configure a number of the profile properties for your users on your DNN site. Now, for now, we're not going to get into all the details here. We'll talk about user profiles in a future video, but here we can start to control some of the visibility options within our profiles. If you allow users to update their Twitter profiles, you can control that default visibility. Who should be able to see that Twitter link or Twitter account on someone's profile? Typically, a social media link like a Facebook icon or a Twitter link, you might actually want to change that from admin only to an option such as members only, friends and groups, or even all users, anyone visiting the website. The other option here on the right side of this user profiles page is the vanity URL prefix. 
DNN by default will use a slash users slash and then the user's profile name as the URL to access a user profile. You can change that if you don't want to use the word users. You might use just a U or some other term. After the user profiles tab, we have a site aliases tab. This is how we control the domain name that our DNN website is going to respond to. In this video, we're not going to go into the details on that, but pay attention or stay tuned for a future video later this week in which we start to configure some of the site alias options so that you can have a DNN website that responds to a different domain name uh, from other computers. Right now, we have our setup to only respond to dnndev.me, and that will only only work on a local computer. After that, we have a more option. We covered some of the options here on this page on the check for software upgrades and the participate in the DNN improvement program in video number five in our series. Now above that, we have an HTML editor manager. Here you can go in and you can configure which WYSIWYG or what you see is what you get editor you want to utilize on your DNN site. Now from there, we can get into the languages option. The languages option in the site settings allows us to start to configure different languages within our DNN website. DNN has a very robust localization feature allowing you to provide your site visitors the ability to choose to view content of different languages, English, German, Spanish, whatever language pack you choose to install. Now, DNN will not automatically translate the content that you provide in your site, but it provides you tools so that you can have multiple versions of content, one for each language. Check out some of the older videos we've done in previous versions of DNN to see some of that functionality. We'll also add that to the list of videos we want to try to work on later in our DNN 9 series. Then finally, after that, we get into a search feature or search option here within the site settings. This is where we can go through and start to configure the various properties of, of the search that we have enabled within our DNN installation. In this case, we can control the minimum word length. If the search is indexing content on our site, should it index words that are three characters or more, or we can change that value. Perhaps we only wanted to index words that are four characters or more, we can change the length there. The maximum word length also applies. We can set a max there. There's a custom analyzer type option. This will allow us to go through and configure different analyzer types. If we're using different languages on our site, we can have the search indexer analyze based on those languages. And then we can enable partial word search by checking the option there. After that, we can get into the search priorities. We can allow and weight the various aspects of content on our site. If the search index indexer is indexing a page or a module and finds content in the module with a title, you can have a heavier weight to that result over content which has that same word in it or the descriptions, or even the author name. So we can slide those to move those around to adjust the weights. After that, within the search index, we can come in here and compact the index or re-index our content. A couple of options here. If you go ahead and click on re-index content, DNN will give you a warning message that says, are you sure you want to do this? On our site, it's a pretty small site. There's really no content on the pages yet. It's really not a risk to go ahead and re-index our content. But if you've got a site with a lot of pages, you definitely want to maybe re-index that content in the off hours of your site. Now I'll go ahead and click save to make sure I save the change here for the enable partial word search. Now let's take a look, a look at the last two tabs here within the search area. We have a synonyms tab, which allows us to come in here and to provide synonyms for words that you want to have search results work for. So out of the box, DNN comes with a synonym for DNN and, and the word .NET nuke. You can edit that or add items. And then we finally have an ignore words option. There are a number of default words here that are ignored in the search results. You can see those listed here. We can modify those and start to add additional words to the ignore words list. 
So this video ran a little bit longer than we wanted to, but uh, we wanted to get into as much of the site settings as we could in this video. Be sure to check out our next video in our DNN 9 series in which we're doing an upgrade for DNN 9. This is Chris Hammond with ChrisDoc.com. Thanks for watching the video.